Amanda here. So as you know, as well as my crafting, I like to come and do product reviews. I don't get any um, commission, no affiliate links. I'm not getting you to buy anything. I just like to do good, honest reviews to so that my um, followers can um, have my opinions on products before they buy them. So one main thing that is a massive topic of discussion is what is a good trimmer to buy. So I've tried various over the years and I recently bought this one which is the Tim Holtz uh, Tonic Studios and it's like a rotary trimmer. Um, it's the new one, I think it cost me about £70 or something which is an awful lot of money to me for a craft tool. However, I'd read loads of reviews, I'd watched loads of other people's videos and I thought I would invest and upgrade from my Stamping Up Trimmer, which I have had a very long time. It's never let me down. I just thought I needed something a little bit more substantial because I do a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of cutting, okay? And um, I wanted something that was able to cut heavier weight things. The Stamping Up one is brilliant. You can cut um, chipboard and things like that on it, but it's not recommended. Um, you know, and you will beat up your blades faster. So I thought, right, I'll retire my Stamping Up trimmer. Okay, I've had it a long time. I've had my money's worth out of it and I'm upgrading to a more substantial trimmer. And I chose this one because it's a rotary, like a rotary cutter. And so for me, because I do a lot of cutting, it was going to work out financially cheaper, even though the trimmer's not cheap financially cheaper in the long run because I wouldn't have to repeatedly replace the blades. The Stamping Up blades you get four in a pack and they're about £11, okay? I'm not saying that's expensive, but you know, if you cut a lot and you're going through a pack of these a month, then over a year that's a lot of money. So over a year this trimmer would have paid for itself in the fact that I don't have to buy new blades. Okay, so that's the main reason why I swapped from the Stamping Up to this. Also, you can cut heavier weight things with this. The recommended weights of what you can cut up to is in the manual. I've always stuck to the manual and the recommendations. I wouldn't try and cut, you know, things that are not recommended. So let me just tell you, I've been using this trimmer for quite a few months now. I wanted to use it for a long time to make sure it wasn't user error or, you know, that I was doing everything correct. And I'm going to tell you what um, I don't like about this trimmer. So the first thing that I noticed is it's actually quite heavy. Although it's still lightweight, it's far heavier because all of this is metal. Now, that's a good thing because it's very sturdy. You've got a metal bar there. It is not going to break. It's very sturdy. Okay, so that is a benefit. But for me, it's quite heavy. Also, it's quite long on my desk. I've got quite a short, a, a short width desk. Okay, the Stamping Up Trimmer fits nicely on my desk. Okay without any problems this one is i don't know if you can see do i need to zoom out ever so slightly let's zoom out ever so slightly i'll do it that way as you can see the um tonic what the tim holtz one is quite significantly longer and so i struggle to fit it on my desk so that it's flat because obviously you need it flat you don't want it like hanging off your desk things like that you need it flat to cut so this is quite a lot larger so if you've got a narrow desk you, you're almost having to put it on an angle like that which is not ideal the other thing about this is i have struggled intermittently at the moment it's not so bad but intermittently this will become quite stiff near the top and i'm having to you know um, maybe I need to put some WD-40 on the track, but you shouldn't, when you buy something, you shouldn't have to then start messing with it. It should just work, okay? So it's it's sliding nicely today, but there are some times when it's almost like it's stiff there. Now, you don't press down when you're uh, using this. You just go up and down, so it's not that I'm pressing on it. I'm doing everything correct. So... Um, it has got the lift out arms and it's got one top and bottom, which I do like. 
and I think it is useful to help you keep your paper straight. And some people cut from the bottom up, you know, they, they do all the measuring here. I do all my measuring from the top and cut down, okay? It doesn't say in the instructions that it matters which way you cut, whether you do top down or bottom up. That shouldn't affect it, but it, it's useful that you've got this here, okay? Now, the only thing I don't like about these arms here is if you look, they're not flush with the unit. So they come out and there's a there's a drop, it drops down. If you look at the Stampin' Up trimmer, and this is my old beat up one that I've had been using for years since they brought this one out. If you look there, it's flush. So when you're laying your paper on there, it's flush all the way across. With this one, when you lay your paper on, you've got a drop, okay? You've got a drop. Now, it can affect ever so slightly your measurements because if you're going like that and, you, and you've and you got your paper and you, you're looking where the measurements are, if you start having to press your paper down to look, you know, and get that measurement, then it, that can affect your measurement, but ever so slightly. I have seen other people, um, and this was Cathy Arter, and she uses a um, an ink pad and she puts it on the measurement and pushes her paper up to it to make sure it's um, straight. In my opinion, you shouldn't be needing to do that okay you, sh you shouldn't be needing to do it the other thing that i don't like about the um tim holtz one is it's very difficult to see between six and these measurements here so you're kind of missing six and a quarter six and three eighths and six and a half is quite difficult to see now the side of the unit has got like bevels and if I, you know, I watched a few videos and a few other people's and they told you where these measurements were so i've made a little black marks Again, when I'm buying a trim, I, sh I don't feel like I should be guessing where the measurements are, okay? On the stamping up one, probably because I've used it for years and I'm used to it, the measurements are, are far clearer. You've just got a little bit of discrepancy here between uh, this tiny grey mark here, but, you know, it's you can work it out far easier than this. I'm not confident when I'm cutting um six and a quarter six and three eighths and six and a half on this trimmer so i found i was grabbing my stamping up trimmer to make those cuts well what you know what's the point the other thing that i'm not keen on with this trimmer is <clears throat> if you look at the stamping up trimmer here where you've got the cutting running guide you can see clearly where that blade's going to run very clearly there's no real ambiguity there and if you want to cut the tiniest sliver off of the edge of your paper okay you can literally put it on the tracking guide on the cutting track and you can literally cut you know you can easily cut a sliver now this blade is uh, not a genuine stamping up blade so it's going to rip my paper i'm not prepared to change it <laughs> but the stamping up one does do with the slivers on the tim holtz one i find it very difficult to see where the actual edge is now it's metal let me lift up to show you it is metal you can see but it's difficult because this is quite big and if you run your finger on the, along there to try and guide yourself where it is it's quite sharp so be careful so i don't know if it's because of the type of blade that this is which is a circular rotary blade okay which is obviously meant to sharpen itself against that metal edge kind of so it lasts longer these are replaceable After, uh, over time you will need to replace them how long i don't know it will depend on your usage okay but if you want to go and cut a sliver off first of all it's difficult to determine where the edge is it's not the easiest okay and then i find there you go what it does is it, if i show you on this side it kind of like, it's almost like it's scoring it and not cutting it. So it's very, very difficult to take slivers off. So again, I've been bringing in my stamping up trimmer and doing that. So you kind of think, well, what's the point in having two trimmers? So I'm kind of falling out with this uh, Tim Holtz one. I've actually just today, and this is a brand new one, um, invested in a brand new stamping up trimmer. This is my old one okay and the only reason that i've invested in a new one is because i use mine a lot every day very heavily and because all of this is plastic over time it's kind of got beat up 
um, you know, and then if you're clearing the cutting track of debris <clears throat> with a pokey tool or whatever, you know, because it's plastic over time, it's going to get wear and tear and that can affect your cutting quality. OK, um, this one also, the scoring blade has always jumped out on this one, but I generally don't score on here anyway. I generally score on my scoreboard. So I have actually invested and I will be going back to my stamping up trimmer for paper cutting. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to completely ditch the Tim Holtz one. What I'm going to do is, um, you know, this one is far lighter. It's easier on my arms, lifting it backwards and forwards on and off my desk than this one. OK, I don't have room in my craft room to have a specific place to have this to, and then walk over, go and cut and come back. I don't, I don't have room. OK, some people have larger craft rooms and they have bigger cutters and they've got a cutting area. I don't have that luxury. So I've got to constantly be lifting this in and out of the way when I'm cutting to the side of my desk, back on cut. OK, and that is a lot of weight. This is far lighter. OK, it weighs next to nothing. All right. The only downside to these is... The cutting blades themselves are not overly expensive if you work it out. £11 for four is not overly expensive. The only downside to stamping up is they've increased their postage. So if all you want to purchase are the cutting blades, you're paying the shipping, it's making those cutting blades expensive. The other downside is I've waited nearly three weeks for this to come. I'm not complaining. That's not a complaint. I wasn't in a rush for it. But if I had... Um, inadvertently run out of um, blades and not ordered them in plenty of time I would be three weeks without my blades you can purchase these on Amazon and get them next day and these are the vast and creative okay price wise they actually don't work out much cheaper than the stamping up ones but you don't have the postage if you've got um, Amazon Prime and they're here the next day so that's the benefit of these I will say <laughs> that these are not as good as the Stampin' Up! ones. They're not. They're not as good, okay? They're about the same price-wise. You can get them faster. They're good to have as a backup. They're good if you run out. They aren't quite exactly the same as the Stampin' Up! ones, okay? Um, people will argue, well, they're made in the same factory, blah, blah, blah. They're very, very much the same. The moulding on them's the same. Everything looks the same. But I have used, been using these for several months and as an experienced paper crafter and a previous Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And I'm not doing it to shout out Stampin' Up! by the way at all. I will honestly tell you that these are not as good or as sharp as the Stampin' Up! ones and they don't last as long. Okay? But the good is a backup. Alright? And I know you can get... Um, Hobbycraft ones and there's other uh, brands that make this trimmer in this same shape with the same style of blades. I haven't tried those. The Hobbycraft ones I can never get hold of. They're always out of stock and I just feel like the quality of them is not going to be exactly the same. I, don't ask me why. It's just experience. Same as, you know, I got these thinking, well, you know, I've solved my problem. It solved my problem if I need something faster, but they're not as good. Okay, so I have um, gone back to the Stamping Up Trimmer. Now, will I completely ditch the Tim Holtz one? No, I won't completely ditch it. That would be lying. First of all, I've paid for it. <laughs> what this is really good for is because it's got this blade that kind of self-sharpens itself and is more sturdy, and less kind of disposable than the stamping up one i will use this when i'm cutting acetate i will use it when i'm cutting heavyweight cardstock and i will use this for my chipboard i only use lightweight chipboard up to the recommended um you know weight that's in the instructions for this if you go online it will tell you what weight of um, chipboard or card that this is designed to cut up to if you're trying to cut over that and it's you're not getting good results then you know it's just one of them things it, you know if, you, if you're trying it and it works then it works but it's not recommended so i stick to the recommendations 
because this um you know if you're cutting acetate on here these blades are quite um the sharp but the more the more delicate aren't they than this rotary cutter that's a robust circular large piece of whatever steel or whatever they make them out of so i will use this to cut my acetate heavier weight cardstock and i will use it for um lightweight chip chipboard this is also really good for cutting multiple layers because it will cut um thicker than the stamping up one so i could cut you know four or five or six sheets at a time with this without dulling the blade you could do it with this but you're going to dull the blade so in short what i want to advise you is both of these trimmers are good in their own ways they've both got downsides and the fact of the matter is through years of experience there isn't one trimmer that suits all needs and that people don't want to hear that you know because you don't want to buy multiple tools you want to buy one and be done but the fact of the matter is you're going to need more than one trimmer okay you're going to need a heavyweight trimmer and a lightweight trimmer if you're new to card making and all you ever make is cards or cut paper, then this is fine. If you do albums and folios where you're going to be cutting things like acetate and lightweight chipboard, you're going to need another heavier weight one or use a blade. I don't like to use a cutting blade and mat because if I slip, I'm going to chop my arm off and you can guarantee I will. So the fact of the matter is that, you know, I think sometimes we can quite easily expect far too much from a tool. And not all of them are going to perform exactly how we want it. So I think that although this is no longer going to be my key, my key cutter, I'm going to go back to the Stamping Up one. The combination of them both together is going to fit all of my needs. And so in short, <laughs> in summary, <laughs> you may well need more than one cutter in your life. Unfortunately, it is as simple as that. Okay. So that is my findings and that is my recommendations. I wouldn't rush out and buy this unless you feel like you need a heavyweight cutter. Okay, these lightweight trimmers are more than adequate for lightweight paper crafting. Um, the combination of the two will fit all of just about all of your needs. So I hope that helps. I hope that re review helps. I just have an absolute love affair with this Stamping Up trimmer. Even though I don't have a love affair with the company themselves, I have a love affair with some of their products. And the Stamping Up trimmer, I have to say, is the best trimmer I've ever used. It just doesn't like heavyweight stuff. It will cut it, but it, it will jack up your blades. And so this is where this fits in. So I hope that helps. That is an absolute honest review um you know don't get paid for reviews i just like to share to give people um you know my kind of experience as a everyday crafter everyday cutter i do it for my job and so you know these get a lot of use <laughs> they get a lot of use uh, they're not stuck in a cupboard and i only use them once a year i use them all day every day um, so I can give uh, uh, good reviews for you. So I hope that helps when you are going to buy your trimmers. I do highly recommend the Stamping Up trimmer. I really, really do. It's not overly expensive. Yes, the blades are a pain. But if you can find a Stamping Up demonstrator that lives in your local area, they can add a, you know, a pack of these to their order and pass them to you physically. Okay, so you're not paying that what is it six or, is it six or eight pounds i can't remember how much it's not cheap um it's you know you're almost doubling the price of the blades but if you find a demonstrator that lives locally or you're putting in a large order anyway then you know it's horses for courses so that's my advice if you're looking for a stamping up demonstrator in the uk i can advise the demonstrator that i use who is ian potter who is absolutely fantastic i'll leave his stamping up um demonstrator link in the description box below um i think it's nice to support small demonstrators rather than the big names um because you know they they need the help to meet the minimums it, it, it's just more it's just worth more to them um so i can highly recommend him he is lovely he is a friend so i am biased absolutely i am 
but there you go i'm honest as well so i hope that uh, reviews helped you and uh, yeah sometimes it is a case of trying a few things to see what suits you but if you can read reviews and save money um all the best so there's my honest review on the tim holtz trimmer and my um my advice on which is the best to use thanks for watching take care and i'll see you soon bye